Jay Hibbs, Stretford, Paddock, that's Ronaldo Brown. Chelsea, four, Manchester United, three. One of the most bizarre games of football I've ever seen. One of the most deflating games of football I've seen in a long time. United leading after going 2-0 down, leading 3-2, going into the last minute. In the 95th minute, we were 3-2 up. Chelsea looked like they give up. And then they get a late, late penalty and then an even later winner. And for the second week running, United have conceded late goals. The second game running, although this time, instead of conceding the one late goal, we conceded two. And a game that, at one point, what, 10 minutes ago, we were all laying around the Stamford Bridge pitch, Ronnie, laughing at him. We've actually left Stamford Bridge with nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, get involved in the comments and the chat. Hit that like button. You might not like what you've just seen. If you're not doing already, subscribe to the channel, please, people. Um, and get us there. Yeah, let me know what you think. Ronnie, if you can, just sum up how you're feeling after that, bro. Because your face is it all. Yeah. I don't know, man. Um, head was on fucking Pluto. I don't know. I've, had, I've got so many, like, thoughts going through my head. And I feel like I'm, I don't even want to be repeating myself because I, I sound like a broken record. But honestly, to United fans out there, that last two minutes there probably encapsulates our season and all of the issues. It's just lightweight, poor decisions, open, then sitting back too deep, just not kind of reacting to the game state correctly at, at any point. Um, players Sorry. making poor decisions. You've got McTominay bombing forward when we're three to up. You've got Bruno booming the ball away. You've got, I don't know, man. I've, you've got thingy getting beat down the line from um, and then stumbling. I think the penalty was soft, but the same with Anthony. I think it's Anthony and Delo. The penalties they've given away is because they've allowed the opposition players to get goal side. And it's just, it's just switching off with that last Palmer goal. But it's just, I think I'm not gonna lie to you. It, it can seem harsh conceding two goals at the end of the game like that, but. If I'm being honest, United have deserved that. I think that deserved that because because that's been basically a culmination of what United have been getting away with in certain games and didn't get away with tonight. And it's just against a really poor Chelsea side, I'm not going to lie to you, Chelsea weren't good today. No. They weren't good. They were poor. They were just poorly organised as us. They were just as open as us. And I think if we were competent, compact, structured, and just played halfway decent. I think we you you win that game against Chelsea comfortably, and as usual, we made a pig's ear of it. And I'm not gonna lie to you. There's there's very few players that can hold their head up high. You've got Anthony, who's probably put in his best performance ever in the United shirt. Hundred percent agree with that. And then he's turned up on a losing side, and then you've got the likes of Casemiro, absolutely shit in the bed. He's finished. <laughs> then you've got Delo, who's meant to be. He's a guy that I've given a lot of praise and he's meant to be probably our player of the season, having a fucking awful game as well. It was like Buck ended I mean? his game. Like, like, it was the first half hour and then like the you've got, it's last like, half hour. You've got, you've got Rashford come on and not touch the ball. No. Um, I just, I, I actually don't know what to say. I think my head is kind of blown off, mentally draining. So hard to do a review like this after a game like that because you've got so many thoughts spiraling in your head, but... I don't know, man. United's game model that some people are trying to make excuses for and praise week in, week out. Um, that's what you get. In, in all honesty, right, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm fuming about tonight and I'm going to get into the comments because there's loads of people in the chat in the comments. So please keep them coming. I will get to them. I'm fuming. I'm deflated. I'm all the above. But I'm fucking dreading Sunday. I am. And I don't want... I know we've got to focus on this now, but... I'm going on yeah. Sunday and I just know after what I've seen this season and what I've seen tonight, I can just see us getting turned over on Sunday at Old Trafford by Liverpool and I'm fucking dreading it because I've, I just think that even when we take a step forward like we did, in that after those casino two goals, we took a step forward, we're winning, we're leading, we've got pretty much had control of the game right near the end then and we just throw it away, we can just implode like a, a United team I've never seen before, even in the dark days of like Ralph Radnick and fucking Ollie just before he got sacked. It's just weird the way we just keep doing this. And to lose 12 games, man, by the beginning of April in the league, it's unacceptable. We've got a goal difference of minus one. And it's just, you can't excuse that. Like, right? Listen, you know me, I get stick all the time for being 
pro tonight and backing the players and all this other stuff. And no, you, you know, Jay, you need to call them out, whatever. But that is just unexcusable for me. Even if you're looking at things like, was it a penalty, was it not a penalty, this, that and the other. And I don't know what Joe Cole's come as either. I'm just seeing him on my screen. Looks like he's in fucking fancy dress. And I just think you can't it's excuse just, these uh, performances week in, week out. The Brentford game was shocking, right? But it was against a team that were very good and looked like organised and looked like they were up for it. Today we played a team that are poor. They are very poor. And they beat us. I'm with United right now and the issues. Um, you've got... We're so bad that there's literally so many things that you can say are like either the root cause or something that's poor or going wrong at the club that I feel like any answer that you have is probably some way correct because it's just you've got obviously got the tactical issues but then you've also got players on the pitch just making awful decisions and performing terribly and you just you can't be as bad as we've been with it just being Tanag or with it just being the players no. The fact of the matter is, what we're seeing right now is a combination of the two. No. It, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And when it's like that, what chance do you have? No. Do you know what I mean? That, what, what, honestly, what, ch what chance do you have? You go down 2 0, having started better than Chelsea, by the way, without even being great. No. You've gifted two goals away. And now I should have saved the first goal. Another cutback that we've conceded. And then Anthony get, allows, the allows score, Anthony, the Anthony allows Cucurella to get On goal side. And then. Oh no, sorry, sorry. Obviously, said it has him, but it has. sorry. Obviously, and then he sloppily, obviously, gives a foul away, and then you've got so many chances in the game for us to kill it and be and show a little bit more composure. The first fifteen minutes of the second half, we've used the the adage saying it's like a basketball game. Yeah. How it transitionally it's been. That's almost been a buzzword for the past few weeks. That was like nothing that I've ever seen. That first fifteen minutes of the second half. No. How open it was. Yeah. And. Everything that we criticise Bundesliga for was like what that first twenty minutes of the that, second half was. Like and I, to me, it looks it looks good on the eye, and you can praise it. Yeah. But there was way too much variance, and there's way too much that you're leaving to chance when you allow the game to be that stretched. One hundred percent. I mean, and I, and that's that to me is a game where you either win or you lose, and then you lose in this way. But the thing is, what's annoys what will annoy me is if that game today with how we kind of operated it and allowed the game to be. If we won, people would still be happy about it and still be praising it in some way. When the people that are trying to kind of push back on that and saying, all right, we've won like that, but is allowing the game to be end-to-end, -end, spaced out, you have a chance, I have a chance, you have a shot, I have a shot. That's not sustainable. It isn't Do you know what I mean? Let, let that's, me get that's through some of these There's so many of them, and then we'll come back to you. Patrick Coyle says, enough is enough. Tanag needs to see the door. Deep End says, no matter if you blame Tanag or not, the current overall situation, no manager can survive this. He's gone in the summer now. Patrick Coyle says, Bruno is a pathetic captain. Rashford needs to go. Paul Gill has been a member of the academy for 17 months. Tired of this. Exhausting being a fan at this point. Feel like it's affecting my mood too much. I don't see any tactics. Confused on the instructions. Vasco, Alexandra, from 90 on, I don't understand what the fuck happened. Every player was just chilling and ready to go home. So humiliating. Sam Zed, players' mistakes are not Eric Tanag's fault, but I feel like it could also be a microcosm of Eric Tanag's shortcomings as a manager. James Stewart, back to Tanag the whole time, but that's it, I'm done. Um, sorry, Abinav Verma has been a member of the academy for 35 months. We never get Anthony penalty. Maybe we get the Delow penalty because he slips awkwardly. Idiot should have fouled him out of the box, man. Eric the Red Hag says Rashford is done. Embarrassed effort. His job when he came on was suppression, not interested. It's like it's beneath him to put the work in. Damien Ahipin says, I'm sick to death of this team. Get rid of the whole team. I'm not kidding. Connor Palmer, don't know if he's related to Cole, says we were terrible in the last minutes here. We can't miss the worst refereeing scene. Second is never a pen. And how was Enzo and Gallagher still on the pitch? Uh, and my road trip who's been a member of the academy for nine months says Phil Fadillo very unlucky um, I don't think VAR would have overturned it if it hadn't been called in real time I think the same with the first one yeah feel like Eric Tanag got his subs right Nick Jones says two pens were very soft no basic control more injuries C clubs curse pray for Sunday and get the, ch the, the lube ready because it's going to be painful Jerry Pereira says don't care Rashford fed the poor because someone else would have done it well I, that's I don't know about that one but I mean I'm more interested in what he thinks about these performances, to be honest with you. Uh, FB, F1 Sports has been like this for years, sat a lot. Fans should be refunded and players should all be forced to walk back to Manchester and a lot sold. Super, um, I think there's a few people, someone's, I don't know why he got uh, took away then, but someone said 
10 out out Southgate in um, never I think there's a few Chelsea fans enjoying this as well make sure you're hitting subscribe as well let's get to 741,000 subscribers by the end of the season Ronnie right a quick a few quick questions do you think Eric Tanag's job's done do you think the Ineos are going to look at this and go this guy's not our guy or do you think he can still save it uh, honestly at this point I have no idea okay because obviously I've been quite critical of him yeah. um, but there's just so many more issues even beyond him, just with the with the players and the personnel. And obviously, I do believe they're being put in game states and situations that aren't like that beneficial. Yeah. Um, I actually think a lot of the injuries that we've get, been getting and the muscle injuries have also been down to the amount of running that we're allowing our players to do because we allow the games to be so stretched. Yeah, And it's just constant box to boxes and suicide runs and... <sighs> It's just it's just a mess really, and to lose a game like I don't know the game management at the end, it's just poor. And on the Rashford one, like with yeah. the way the game was people, when the, when the game when Rashford, the game you know? the way the game was, Rashford's brought on for legs, speed, counter, because we thought that we could catch him on a break, maybe run channels, make it a little bit more difficult for the um, their center halves to play out. As soon as he come on, I turned around to you after five minutes. I was like. After five ten minutes, we've been no, on. It was longer than five ten he, minutes, bro. I was like, bro, Rashford ain't, f he ain't touched the fucking ball. No, he ain't touched the football. He's not made a run. No, he's not done anything. No. Do you know what I mean? He's come on and been a. Pa it's like, obviously, I didn't want to be that guy, but I was. The, it kept funneling to the bench every time United scored, and it's almost he. He was like one of the old few players that barely celebrate. It's just there's something wrong there, and it, it was. Well, it was very so, it's I don't like, want to make this all about yeah. Marcus, but it's worth addressing because it, yeah. you know, it's it's a. a a relevant topic you said before the game you get the impression it might be better for everyone if he you know moves on it might be better for him it might be better for Manchester United and I think for, after, after games like tonight even though it's not just about Marcus by the way it's others as well but sometimes you wonder is it is he not if he's not happy and he don't look happy and it's not benefit Manchester United at the minute is it time for him to go and I hate saying that because you know my thoughts on Marcus Rashford but so both because I'm happy. It's just so it's so crazy. Like how it's we're, not just in by the it's way. It's so much easier when you can point to like really really specific things that are wrong. Yeah. Or that things that need to improve with United. But the issue is, it's crazy that this club can go into every single season and it's almost like more problems are created than are solved. It feels like a Do you reset. Know what I mean? It's like season, I don't know. Bro, it's, every season feels like we're starting over. It's two step forward, three step back. So it's cliche, but that's literally what it is. And um, as I've been saying, when I've been getting criticised, is the way that United have been playing. We've, we've had a few games that we've won this season where we've not even deserved to. Um, the play style that we've been playing with, how open we've been, how many shots we're allowed to against us. I don't know, man. We leave way too much to chance. And that is not how top teams operate. Um, at the top level and I think it was coming for us to get punished in such a like almost like stomach curling way as we, as it's just happened and I, I don't know man it's just like my head is all over um, United it's hope that kills 3-2 up feel like we somehow got a win at Stamford Bridge and then before you know it You've conceded two goals the same way we had victory snatched away from us against Brentford when we didn't deserve that either. But if you're looking at United's performances the last two games, we didn't deserve anything from Brentford either. So um, no, did we fall? I don't know how anyone's going to be able to spin anything like this into a positive. And United are scarily sleepwalking into an absolutely shocking end to the season if we aren't careful. The thing is, right, even if we get past Coventry City, which isn't a given in the FA Cup, City will absolutely destroy us again in the FA Cup final. Because I'm watching tonight, I don't think Chelsea are going to beat City. I don't care. They're not. City will turn us right over. That's, that what that's what's they annoying. Will. Chelsea were there for the taking tonight. They're not that great. It's just like... It, I'm, I'm, so poor, part me, I'm going to the seventh. Part me, I'd rather fucking lose to Coventry and go to the FA Cup final again and getting battered off City. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Um, I'll go through some more Super Chats. There's loads of people commenting in chats. I'll try to get through as many as I can. Um... Sorry, uh, JJS says, Eric and I should quit for his own sanity. The manager role is doomed. And until we have an overhaul of players and club ethos, nothing will change. Manush Kuravila, hey Ronaldo, love your commentary analysis. 
analysis and analysis in spite of poor performance and result. I've loved seeing your development on the channel. Jay, you're amazing as always. Love that. Alex Bailey has been a member of the first team for 40 months. Thank you, Alex. I think you supported us from day one. It's not an Eric tonight. It's the players not doing the basics and the injuries have killed us. Rival fans in the chat laughing. Small, show small club mentality. Ben Niblett says, club, team and management need a complete overhaul. Midsoka Marius, member of the academy for 30 months again. Thank you for your support. I'm just done. We can blame whoever and it's not going to change anything. Chelsea. It's been 10 years of swapping players and managers and nothing changes. Uppercut Jeff. I'm done, man. The club is going to kill me. Stress. Tom Mills. Love the channel. I'm afraid for Sunday now. After that, couldn't watch the game, but was listening to the watch along. We need a clear out in the summer. Need to prioritise the right players in the right place. Discombobulates. As according to Sky, that's the latest the side has ever led, only to go on and lose. Amal Rayo says, whether you want Tanaga's manager or not, nothing will change until Ineos put a structure in place. The reality is that this is how we are going to be until Ineos do a complete overhaul. Uh, family says robbery. Uh, Zach Ryan says sack all the players. Um, sick of the lazy players. Um, also, Marquinho86 says we didn't deserve to scumbag another point today, especially if you take the Brentford game into consideration. Our scumbag account is in overdraft. I think there's some Chelsea um, people in the chat as well. Um, MC says, Jay, you said look at the state of our defending on the live stream, but it's the whole team that allows another 28 shots against. I think, yeah, you can look at our defending, you can look at anything, to be honest with you. I think we're in that position where there's a load of different reasons why we're conceding goals and all of them are true. Lerone Venado has been a member of the academy for 39 months, says our football IQ is so poor. Um, I mean, John Hayes says, Man United a disgrace, bringing Keane. I think Roy Keane ended up. I think he'd end up doing jail time if he came into this this squad. If he came into that dressing room, Roy Keane end up killing someone. Um, Alexander says we will win the FA Cup. I don't know what you've been smoking, but I'll have some. Um, Ronnie, final thoughts? Um, Any hope we go into the game on Sunday and get anything out of it? Can we rally round? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Obviously, we've we've, we've shown that we can, but it almost feels like some of our looks run out um, because unfortunately we're probably looking behind us more than looking ahead at Villa and Tottenham and I'm looking at the last six months and there's been more games that we've got points out of that we shouldn't have than points that we've lost where we should have gained some so as bad as it looks for United now it actually generally could and maybe should have been worse but so I'm I'm struggling to find any positives really apart from Anthony's performance and I feel sorry for Anthony because he's been through the absolute ringer and he's been very underwhelming. He's been awful for a majority of his of his player, and then he's finally probably had probably one of the games of his life for United. And you saw how despondent he looked at the end. And look what he's got to show for it. Um, teammates and United shit in the bed with two minutes to go, and now his performance will be forgotten. But United, they kill us, don't they? I just don't really know what else to say. Um, make sure you are hitting subscribe as well to the channel. I've just put a link in the chat. Um, I'm going to go through some more of these comments. Um, no, I agree. Sorry, Ronnie. I won't ignore you, no, bro. I, I, I know. I do feel sorry for Anthony. I thought he had a good game. And you know what happens, right? With every manager at Manchester United, what happens when it happened with Ole, happened with Jose, it happened with Ralph Ragnick, they start turning to the players who were just putting in the effort for him. They start looking at the players, not necessarily the best players, but the players who are trying. Like, Ragnick liked Alanga because Alanga was doing what he was told mm. to do. Jose liked Fellaini because Fellaini was doing what he, he was asked to do. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, you turn to the players that you think, right, well, he's following these instructions or he's at least showing me the energy and the effort. And I feel like Edith Tanag might need to do that with some of these. He might need to look at maybe if Anthony's Teams not the greatest, that, nah. but if at least if Anthony's trying and looks nah. like he gives a shit, he might end up going that way. I, I think he will. You can't get that type of power off just one, as good as his performance was, just off one performance. I don't know. It's what would you say? Because managers, would you put nah, Marcus man back man in them managers, you, you, I want to play players that they trust. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But at the same time, trust is earned. Do you know what I mean? And that's just. I wouldn't. The, the point the, I'm getting at is, I wouldn't life. be surprised. Genuinely, and I, I might be fucking well off the mark. I wouldn't be surprised if Eric and I stuck with Anthony for the game against the Scousers. That's yeah. my point. I'm getting. Yeah. At. I'm not maybe, saying that maybe, that's the answer to all our problems. Maybe, but, I'm not gonna maybe say that but as I was, but maybe as I was saying, on the trust element, it's players. Managers want to play players that they do trust yeah. to carry out their instructions and play to the way that they want to play. Yeah. Does he have many players he can trust? Maybe, maybe not. No, I don't but, think he but does. But at the same time, it's a two-way thing because 
as a manager, you need to earn the trust of your players. Yeah. With your ideas and your philosoph your philosophy and the way that you're doing things, you've got to make sure that your players believe in it. Do yeah. you know what I mean? I, I, get, so, I get it. It's a two way so, street. So players, so players, so yeah. Half, so players get know? criticized a lot for not for downing tools and and, it, and it's true. Do you know what I mean? Because as a manager, it's a tough job. But at the same time, it's like, I'd, if you're a player and you are kind of not um, performing to the game plan or you're kind of like scoffing at what you're being asked to do and you're seeing players kind of doing their own thing, it shows one, maybe a lack of belief in the manager in what he's doing, two, a lack of respect for the manager, and three, like a lack of trust in what you've been actually advised to do. And I think once that happens, the manager's in trouble. But I don't know. It, it's been, because at the same time, it's been player FC for a long time. And we've seen players come and go at United over the last five years. And we've seen pan managers go come and go within the last 10 years as well. And for some reason, United are just at a stage where we can't seem to get it right. Because for every like bit of progress that we made, there's some reg um, regression around the corner. But I'm not going to lie to you. Everyone that was buzzing about the the Liverpool victory and rightly so and some of the games that we have won since the start of the year you cannot now look at that game today and be surprised that we've lost the game the way we have because as I've said people were trying to kind of hit back on the whole it doesn't matter that we're conceding so many shots because they're all low extra efforts and people just taking shots from miles away and this and that that's bullshit that opinion in my because at the end of the day Every single shot at your goal, no matter if the XG is 0 0.01, is capable of going in. And by law of averages, the more shots you allow against you, the more likely you are, like, you, are like, you are to concede. Because things like the ball going under Ronana's arm or it being deflected off McTominay to go in, shit like that can happen. Do you know what I mean? That doesn't happen if you don't allow a shot. If you don't allow a shot, it doesn't deflect off McTominay and goes in. If you don't, Pam, if you don't Pam allow a shot, shot, if you don't allow a shot, joke. then Anana doesn't. Right. He doesn't go underneath Anana's hands. Do you know what I mean? That, that so there's, there's no justification you, for like. There's you, no. There's you no, said like, just no before. Fault. You said just before he scored, like five minutes. Before, you said it's like you've almost just got to stop Palmer. That's all you got to do. It's not, but what was and then I, I, just I'll to on his own. He's just fucking dumb. Yeah, it's true. But it's dumb. If I'm finish it, like if I finish what I was saying is, I've kept saying. Like there is no justification for the amount of shots that we are conceding because people were trying to excuse it by saying that people are just having shots from range and the XG isn't that high. But then again, even allowing someone to shoot from 25 yards, it can still go in. Well, Eric's you know I mean? kind, so kind of said that himself. So I'd, I believe... He spoke about the quality I mean? of shots, didn't he? The quality, of, I, I, it's right. just, it was kind of like, he dismissed it after the Brentford game a little bit. Yeah. You know, when he was asked about a concern and he was like, well, not really. And it's it's come back to bite us again. Um, we have heard from Eric tonight. We've got the quotes from him as well, because there's quite a lot of people who've put chats in, so I'm going to have to go through these. So I can we make sure... Through. Yeah, you get off if you need to get off. Can we have my single? Yeah. And I'll go through these quotes. Thanks, Ronnie. No uh, go and check Ronnie out on your socials, Ronaldo underscore 98. Um, I'll go through some of your chats as well, and then we'll get the quotes from Eric Tanag. Um, Alex... Sorry, I'm trying to sort of find out where we was up to. Um... Yeah, uppercut Jeff, I think I said that. Tom, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm going to, I've lost my place here. Uh, that's it. Shahaj said it. I was shouting for Delo to pull him down outside the box and concede a free kick. This is basic game awareness. Club needs, uh, Apna King Eric says, club needs to work on the squad. I don't care about Sunday, the manager, and club needs to fix many things, and it takes time. It will take time. Sacking manager is stupid. Don't just think about banter. Modern Samurai says, we can never defend the cutback, and so we send the midfielders 20-yard uh, passes to receive. 20 yards plus to receive passes from the build-up is ridiculous. This is all Eric Tanar's crap tactics. Shea Delane says there's no leaders in the team like years gone by, such as Robbo, Canada, Rio, Rooney, Keane, etc. How can you be successful with this lot? Um, Donald Mulledy says we can't, or we can blame Eric Tanar for tactics and for the likes, but the goals we've conceded today aren't due to tactics, in my honest opinion, but more so because of the players themselves. Um... Gutsum says, back your club, guys. Let's not be what Arsenal used to be. Give the geezer time. Give Ineos time. This is what the club needs. We need to see the cancers before we start fixing it. Our Teta Klopp and Pep had time and see what it does for the club. I think you can back your club and also criticise poor performances when you see it. Darren Cox says, what manager comes in and changes this? Stick with Tanag. Clear out at least five players. A positive today. 
we got three points, but no goals, um, no control. Sorry, um, again, I've just got some quotes here from Eric Tanag. He says, um, we have to manage this game better. There's an understatement. We started poor, defending poorly on the first two occasions, but you could see us dominating the game. It was brilliant how we played. I mean, it was up to a certain point, wasn't it? And then, obviously, the wheels came well and truly off. And it is the same old story this season for Manchester United. Losing again. What's that? 12 losses in the Premier League now. You can forget about top five. I think we're, what, 11, uh, nine points behind Spurs, is it? And 11 points behind Villa. I mean, it ain't happening, is it? Really, really disappointing. Another frustrating night for United. And something I've not seen in all my time supporting Manchester United. Going into the 96th minute, leading the game to lose it. I've never seen anything like that. Seriously, it's fucking ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to be back in the morning with the news. Then we've got a big interview coming up. Plus, we'll have the brew tomorrow as well. If you're not doing already, subscribe to the channel. I'll put a link in the chat. There's a link in there. Hit that subscribe button. And also, give the video a like as well. Over 5,000 people watching. And I don't think we've got to 1,000 likes. So, hit that like button. Some of you might even be Chelsea fans watching this to revel in United's misery. And to be honest with you, I don't even blame you. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. Abby J. Motte. This has been a review. Manchester United losing at Stamford Bridge. <sighs> Hopefully, we can turn this around for the game on Sunday. But, you know, I'm not holding up too much hope. Um, don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.